Good morning and welcome to our Thoughts for the Week. I'm Stephen. It's lovely to have you with us again. A word that's come very much to mind over these last few days has been the word comfort. It's definitely what the world needs in these days. We all need comfort. But when you think of comfort, I wonder what you think of. Do you think of a big warm blanket, a lovely soft armchair, even the fabric conditioner? Those things make us comfortable. They make us snug, they make us cosy, but that's not what comfort is. To comfort is to support, to help, to bring relief. And we often mistake comfort for being comfortable. The dictionary says, let me read, comfort is a state of physical ease and freedom from pain or constraint. It's the easing or the alleviation of a person's feelings of grief and distress. The verb comfort comes from the Latin and it simply means to strengthen greatly, to shore up. When we think of com comfort, we think of being wrapped around, but actually the word comfort means to be strengthened inside, to shore up, to fortify. That's what real comfort is. And to be able to comfort folk, truly comfort folk, is of such vital importance. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When we are troubled, we will be able to give the same comfort God has given us. In just those few verses, in the beginning of 2 Corinthians 1, actually, comfort is used 10 times. And Paul wants us to note the source of our comfort. It comes from the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ because of Jesus. We can call God our Father. Because of Jesus, we can approach him as our ch his children. Because of Jesus, we are beloved of God. Because of Jesus, we are accepted in the beloved. And Paul says, God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. One of the reasons Jonah, the prophet, ran away from the will of God is because he knew Jonah 4 verse 2, he knew that God was merciful and God was compassionate. And he didn't want God to show that compassion or that mercy to the people of Nineveh. When God comforts us, he doesn't pat us on the head and goes, oh, it'll be all right. That's sympathy. What God does when he comforts us is he gives us strength in our hearts. The same word, comfort, is where we get the word comforter. The name to describe the Holy Spirit of God. John 14 to John 16. The one who comes alongside us to strengthen and uphold us. Paul says God's the source of our comfort. Paul says God is the scope. Look at the scope of our comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles. When we, so we can comfort others. Paul knew trouble. He had been shipwrecked, he had been beaten, he had been imprisoned. Boys, every time that fella stepped out, he, he, he was like moth to a light. That's what trouble came to Paul. But he discovered this, though I'm hard pressed, 2 Corinthians 4. I'm not perplexed. When I'm downtrodden, I'm not knocked out. When we feel under pressure, when we feel confined, God has promised he will comfort us. Even in grief. King David would say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, what do they do? They comfort me. God promises comfort when we're worried. Isaiah 43. He promises comfort when we're lonely, Psalm 73. 
He promises comfort when we're tired and weary, Isaiah 40. He promises comfort when we're discouraged, Psalm 34. He will comfort us. The source, the scope. And look at the strength of that comfort. When we are troubled, we will be able to give the same comfort he's given to us. When we have known God's strengthening in our hearts, then we'll be able to strengthen the hearts of others. You know, trouble has a way of binding humans together that prosperity never does. And actually, when people have been in our shoes, have walked our road, then when they offer comfort, it's easier to take it from them, isn't it? And the comfort that we have comes from God himself. In my Bible dictionary of themes that's just behind my head, the word comfort in that dictionary is followed by the word compassion. Don't think that's a mistake. That's what God offers us, comfort and compassion. Dr. Warren Wearsby, a preacher, who the Lord took home recently, said this once. When God puts his children into the furnace, he keeps his hand on the thermostat and his eye on the thermometer. God's promised not to put us through more than we can handle, and he's promised in our difficulties. He's promised us comfort. May we find comfort in him. And may we be a comfort to each other in the days ahead. May the Lord bless you.